Welcome to Scoreography, a podcast about the greatest sport on ice, figure skating. I'm Wendy Buskey. And I'm Adrian Buskey. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the World Junior Championships 2024 from Taipei. But before we get to that, I want to address something. Oh boy. Sometimes on this show, I will say I am not a fan of comebacks. I'm not a big fan of people who've been out of the sport for a while, who retired at the top of the game, deciding they're going to come back. I know where this is going. But I will put a caveat for that, that I am very excited for the chance to sometime next season to hear this. Next to skate, representing the United States of America, Alyssa Lou. Yeah, we're, we're pretty stoked about that. Very, very stoked about that. Yes. I was not expecting sound effects. This is great. <laughs> I came prepared this time. You did. We don't really know much more about that other than Alyssa on her Instagram announced that she has been prepping since January, has gotten back on the ice, has gotten back her triples. What we've seen in the video already looks pretty impressive. She's coming back this next season, and that is something, especially as a U.S. fan and U.S. resident, that's something to be excited about for U.S. figure skating. Oh, I am sure the United States Figure Skating Association is beside themselves knowing that they get Alyssa Liu back next season. Yeah, I don't have much more to say other than it's great. I can't wait to see her. Yeah. So to the task at hand, we're going to be talking about the World Junior Championships. This happened this past weekend in Taipei. You know, the thing we've talked about previously in the season is that we have not really watched a lot of juniors in the past. Some of you asked us to cover them earlier in the season, and so we've been starting to pay a little bit more attention to that level of competition. And I was really surprised and impressed with the level of competition that went on at this event, particularly in the women's division. The women's division was so deep and really phenomenal. Like, even Ted, the ISU announcer, was talking about at the very bottom of the rung, if you will, of the people that had qualified for the free program, people in 16th through 24th place. All of them were good. Yeah. Like, I don't know what my expectations were, but it was really quite surprising in the best possible way to see so many skaters have great skates. Yeah, normally when we see these big competitions where you do have like 40 people internationally skate, there's often a lot of them that are very low level. And this is when we think of national level competitions where you get people who can only get like a 30 or a 40 or something. And they're just, they're not. Or even four continents. Yeah, they're just not competitive on that level. And I had that expectation going into juniors that we would be seeing something kind of similar, that there would be a lot of skaters who would be on that kind of lower level. And instead, what we got was, like you said, 24 skaters who had very nice, very clean skates. They were not zamboning the ice all over the place. They were delivering terrific performances. There were people down in 20 and 21st spots that were really good. It's just that the competition was so tight, especially I think between it was like sixth and 12th was like, you know, a point spread of maybe a couple of points. It was all so clustered together in there. But overall, the women's competition was really, really exciting. And if we're talking about people I was not surprised to see do extraordinarily well, it's Mao Shimada, who took the gold as I would say most predicted, but in such a way that I don't think it was predicted because it was fairly close. She only won by six points, which may sound like a lot, but considering some of the technical arsenal she brings, it was a bit of a surprise thanks to her silver medal opponent, Jia Shin. These two have had a rivalry over the last couple of years based on them kind of fighting for podium places a lot. And Mal Shimada has pretty consistently taken some of the big wins, largely on the strength of her having a triple axle and a quad toe, which especially sans the Russian women skaters in international competition right now, there just aren't a lot of women who have some of those, I guess what you would call them ultra C competitive elements. Mal Shimada is one of the few, and she's also just a very complete skater. She has incredible artistry, amazing speed, like she holds her, her lines. spins oh. are terrific. But Gia Shin, who has now, I believe, three straight silver medals in the junior worlds, Gia Shin from Korea is a gorgeous skater. I mean, just beautiful lines, fantastic artistry, crisp, beautiful triples. She's a joy to watch. Aesthetically of the two, my preference leans towards Gia Shin. 
And I saw that a lot of people online were actually pretty upset about how this one kind of shook out because I think a lot of people were ready to see Jia Xin step up and actually get that gold. And she did everything that she could do. I mean, she delivered two absolutely phenomenal skates here. Really, when you look at that six point differential, it really comes down to Maushamad having those two ultra C jumps. It's so close. And I really do feel like these two, if they can continue on the path that they're currently on into seniors, which is going to be a while for them. I can't imagine what they're going to be doing by then. Just for reference, going to the points, Mal Shimada had a 218.36. There's only, I believe, two women in the world in seniors this season that have gotten a higher score than that. And Jia Shin with a 212.43 would beat most senior women at this point as well both exceptional skaters in their own right. And I'm just excited for this rivalry. Honestly, I think the sport needs it. I think that they both bring something exceptional to the sport. And I can't wait to see them for the next decade, I hope, going head to head. The question that always arrives for women in this sport is when you're this good on the junior level and when you first enter the national competition, the unpredictable element is what will happen with your body long term. Like if you will go through a physical change that will affect your ability to do those kinds of jumps or perform that way. The post-puberty change. Right. Yeah. You know, we've seen lots of women go through that. It changes their relationship to their body and their body's relationship to the ice. And that can be a very challenging thing. But right now, what we're looking at is two women who, if they continue on this trajectory, I mean, they're already world-class talents. We just have to wait for them to be able to get to seniors in a couple of years. Yeah. But between these two, absolutely spectacular and so entertaining. And like I said, I mean, maybe of the programs, my preference leans towards just Gia Shins, but Mao Shimada is absolutely wonderful. But in a lot of ways, for me, the story here was actually the third place finish from Japan's Rina Yuzono. Rina Yuzono, 13 years old, came out here and just blew me away. I think towards the end of her program, I just took a breath and was like, that's one of the best programs I've seen this season, period, from anybody. It was just so good. She is a talent that I'd heard her name, but I was not terribly familiar with prior to this competition. And she can absolutely count me as a fan now. I cannot wait to see more from her and I mean, yes, she's 13. She has quite a few more years in juniors and we'll see how things progress to your point. But regardless, she has so much potential. It's outrageous. And while she was, you know, notably behind Mao and Gia, she wasn't that far behind, especially as someone who doesn't have the same level of experience that they do just yet. So she is such a talent, such a star. I think that we're going to be hearing her name a lot more. I think it's worth noting that she was eighth after the short program and then jumped into third place with the power of her free skate. So if she'd had a better short, I think she would have been closer to the top two. Sometimes when you watch juniors or senior competition, you can see some people and just have that sense of like, oh, they still have junior qualities. Or yeah. sometimes you can watch a junior and go, oh, they have real senior quality. And it's kind of an inevitable thing. It's hard to describe. You just know it when you see it. Yeah, it's very much you can look at the technical elements and, you know, the overall style on ice, if you will, like the overall skating skills. And that's measurable. But there are qualities that don't feel as defined. Just looking and watching a skater and feeling like, OK, their level of commit, their level of presenting to an audience, their ability to be in tune with music. Some of that just feels much more innate and not necessarily as qualifiably learned. So seeing Rena here, it was like she already has it in spades. She has the it factor, for lack of a better word. Big, big it factor, for sure. But it wasn't a large distance between her and the fourth place finisher of Ida Karunin. And then on down the line, you get Akira Kushida from Japan, who had been in third place uh, after the short, who put on terrific programs, just had a few struggles in the free skate. Anastasia Brandenburg from Switzerland in sixth, who was also a wonderful skater. Serena Yuse from Italy, who we've seen a lot this season, who won the Italian Nationals and put on pretty good performances in some international competitions. 
and has been like making a name for herself. Did pretty nice work here. You know, I think it is interesting to see somebody who is a senior level skater here kind of get dominated by some of those other junior levels, but still did some nice work here. And she made a jump from 14th up into that seventh place. So a lot of things did move around a lot because the point spread was very, very thin. I was super excited for USA's Sherry Zhang in eighth place because I thought Sherry put on a really nice performance here. She did. But I do want to take a step back. Ida Karhunen from Finland, from some of the stuff I was seeing online, at least I'm not alone in thinking she came kind of out of nowhere. Not that people hadn't seen her on the scene or weren't aware of her, but not to this degree of, oh my gosh, you're fourth in both the short and the long and just came out with such confidence she very much has the spirit of a winner. You could kind of feel it in her. She impressed me. Yeah, her free skate to Bohemian Rhapsody was very strong. It was very confident and mature and well-executed and good choreography. Yeah, really solid stuff there. Yes. Akira Kushida from Japan was in third, and her short program might have been my favorite from anybody in the short. Just absolutely adored her. Anastasia Breidenberg. Wow. From Switzerland, she has potential with a capital P. So much projection and artistry and interpretive skill on ice. She still needs to work on her technical. But man, I was just overwhelmed by how connected to her music she was. And to your point as well, Sherry Zhang from the U.S., I think that the U.S. needs more stars desperately in the women's field. And I'm really hoping that she continues the rise that we've been seeing from her. So all around incredible competition. But one more I do want to mention is Lulu Lin yeah. uh, from Canada. I think that there had been such a kind of focus and we are very much a part of that focus on Kaya Ruder, who won the Canadian National Championship. But Lulu Lin was third there then came here and is in top 10 in the world juniors. She had two fantastic programs, small mistakes here and there, but overall had so much to give. Like her energy on the ice was just phenomenal. And she is absolutely a new talent for Canada. I'm also excited to see where she goes. I really liked Lulu Lin's whole presence on the ice and the performances that she delivered there too. And another person who made a big jump, she went from 15th to 10th, which is a, a nice leap there. There's also some really good skaters that we like a lot that landed much further down. There's the South Korean twin skaters of Yoo Song Kim and Yoo Jae Kim. They came in 15th and 16th, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And one of them had performed quite a bit better. Yoo Song, who was much higher up after the short program and then kind of fell down to where the other one was. They're just so charming on the ice. I really like their performances. This particular competition didn't go as well for them, but they are just such bright personalities and they bring something kind of special to the ice, I think. But for a lot of the conversations that we had leading up to this over the season, some of our big surprises were underperformances from the U.S. skater Josephine Lee, who fell into 20th, and then the aforementioned Kaya Ruder from Canada, who fell to 21st. Yeah, but I do want to say both Josephine and Kaya had really respectable performances here was more death by a thousand cuts for them in both programs. They had a few larger mistakes, but overall, not disastrous. They were still absolutely respectable in their performances here. And I hope that they can take these and roll with it into next season and feel like they got something really good out of the experience. I know Josephine in the post interviews was saying like she had had such a rough season up till senior nationals in the United States that she wasn't even sure she was going to get to be here. So it was a great experience for her. And I'm hoping that as we go in next season to see a better international season and that she's been great at the last two senior nationals, I want to see that extend to the Grand Prix circuit and juniors and, you know, overall see her have more consistency. We've also talked a lot about wondering why Canada doesn't seem to be investing more in Kaya Ruder when it seems like their program really needs to start elevating some of those younger skaters and getting them international competitions. It was pointed out to us in our comments from the last episode that Kaya has failed to reach the minimum required international score for her short program. Yeah, for and, seniors. Yeah, for seniors. And she's had multiple, something like four over the last uh, two years four chances on the international level to get there and just has not achieved it. And I think even looking at this competition, I don't think her short program got to those TES scores that would have qualified her for Worlds. 
I did think it was kind of surprising to see that the international judges just didn't seem to think very highly of her skates. It seemed like even when she put on good programs that she was not scored very well and she and her coach both had that kind of face of, well, here it is again. It's just getting knocked down and we're not sure why. Yeah. And her coach, Scott Davis, if you're a long-term figure skating fan, you'll absolutely know that name as one of the best spinners from the uh, 90s. He was phenomenal. But yeah, seeing both of their faces have that scrunched like, huh, I'm hoping that they can have a conversation with judges, you know, and learn, okay, what are we doing wrong? Like, yeah. what does she need to work on going into next season that she can improve upon so that she is getting better marks? Yeah. It's always frustrating, though, when you see a skater come off the ice looking happy. Oh, yeah. Like they when they're, like, good. elated. Yeah. And then they get into the kiss and cry, and they seem like they're vibing. And then the number hits, and you see their face fall. Hate seeing that. It's awful. It's such a bummer. And I think Kaya got that twice, and it was just frustrating. And again, there were plenty of other skaters in there we could talk oh, about, yeah. but it was just such a great field. It was so much more entertaining than I expected. I really thought we would see a lot of middling skaters struggle until we were getting into that sort of top 12 or so. And instead, it was just this full flight of really terrific talent. And it was great. It was so exciting. Can I be totally honest here? I think it might have been better than a lot of the women's senior events I've seen this season. Yes, for sure. It was really good. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the pairs, because I think that this one was also a bit of a surprise and refreshing after having watched several kind of mid pairs competitions, not counting what we saw at Europeans, which I think was great. Yeah. This one really did stand out. I will say your champions, not a surprise in any way, was Metalkina and Brulava from Georgia. While that was not a surprise, their short program, phenomenal. Their free skate, not up to their standards. Still enough for gold, but definitely a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, I think anybody who watched that free skate from them probably felt kind of uncomfortable just because of how poorly they reacted to it when they were done. And they both struggled with it. I think that Anastasia had a fall and then maybe a step out or a turn out of, of a throw. Luca came out of sort of like a twizzle sequence or something like just way off balance, just not looking strong. And there was just a lot of quality issues. Some of their lifts just looked a little wonky for a team that is as talented as they are and have had so much success on both the junior and the senior circuits. You could tell they expected more from themselves. And when they came off the ice, it just felt very cold when they were in the kiss and cry and they got their score, even though they won. And Grant, there was one more team after them. So there was a chance they could have been overtaken. Very small chance. Luca just put his head in his hands. I have to think that because I believe they're competing in senior worlds as yes, well, they are. which I'll put an asterisk into that at some point, maybe over this summer when we do some of our other thematic things, something I don't like is the ability to compete in both. I think that's kind of weird. Oh, no, I don't. I think that's very strange. Double dipping in both junior and Internationally, seniors. I'll say. Yeah. Nationally, it, like if you're skating one in your, your country and then another internationally, that doesn't bother me. But when it's international competition, it does bother me as well. Yeah. But they clearly were unhappy with that score, and it is not a score that would have held up against the other international senior teams. Oh, no. So I'm pretty sure that they are going back into training and saying, okay, we have to put this back together or we will fall completely off the podium at Senior Worlds. But still, that team has a ton of talent and skill and experience, way more so than a lot of these other junior skaters. But for me, the story here otherwise was really the second and third place American teams. I had not seen either of these teams before, but they were so much fun and I was really impressed. Absolutely. And I think whenever I was leading in and saying things delighted me and surprised me, this is the reason. Like Olivia Flores and Luke Wang, the silver medalists here, U.S. national junior champions for good reason. They're excellent as a team, and I feel silly for having not been more aware of them prior. Like, I think I had seen them once before, and I knew that they were good, but I had not paid enough attention. I will be paying attention going forward. They are excellent. If the name Flores rings a bell, um, we were, only a few episodes ago we were talking about her sister, Isabella Flores, who is one half of Flores and Destoya of the Ice Dance team, which is kind of fun to keep it in the family. But she and Luke had a phenomenal short program, like absolutely stunner program. Their free skate, they had some issues after starting off really, really strongly. She fell on a side-by-side -side triple and then again on one of the throws. 
looked a little startled by the first fall, and I kind of felt like it took her a little while to shake it off. But overall, still with that, a phenomenal free skate. They have so much connection with their music. I'm very impressed with such a young team to be as advanced as they are. And they skated last in the free skate. And when you look at the point spread, there's a 13 point difference between them and first place. If they had hit their personal best, they wouldn't have beaten that total. But if they'd had a really phenomenal skate, they could have walked away with that title. Mathematically, they would have had to have been perfect. And that is not what they delivered. But they still had a really nice program. And that team is fun. And just thinking about the U.S. program for pairs in general, having a team like this coming up is pretty exciting. Of the two, though, the one that I actually found that I had a general sort of preference for their style and their presentation on the ice, it was the U.S. team Naomi Williams and Lachlan Luer. This team I was definitely unfamiliar with leading into this competition, and I don't think that they were really necessarily favorites for the podium. But again, stellar short program. Absolutely phenomenal. Their free skate had some problems in it. Their technical content was a bit lower than the other two teams that were ahead of them. So there was definitely a pretty sizable gap, I'd say 20-ish points, between them and second place. But regardless, they are an absolute team to watch in the future, tons of potential. And as a relatively young, newish team, it's just exciting to your point. The U.S. program in Paris has felt a little iffy at best with the exit of Alex and Brandon And not everything should have been riding on them anyway. So having several teams coming up through the U.S. program is making me feel a little bit more optimistic going forward. Yeah. And I think that Naomi and Lachlan have a ton of charisma together on the ice. She in particular sells so well in the air and seems like kind of a character in the kiss and cry, which I think is hilarious. But I just like the two of them together a lot. I think that what they were able to accomplish, it technically it isn't quite on par with what we'd see in like senior levels yet. But I think the foundation is there and I think that they're a really great team to watch. And also it's worth noting that the USA had three teams in the top 10, including the 10th place with Adele Zhang and Andy Dang. Who I liked them as well. Very yes. much. Yeah, they, they, were, fun. they were very fun as well. So for the U.S. program, this is really promising. Canada had two in the top 10 as well, which is great for them. And very strong teams as well. Yeah, a little bit of an underperformance from Ava Kemp and Yana Tenelizarov because we've seen that team before and they've done better than they did at their sixth place finish here. And I'd say the same for Kent and La Liberté Laurent as well. Yeah, I think that they kind of slipped a little bit as this competition went along. But just overall, I mean, the top three are what's really interesting to me from here in Paris. And, you know, you're also seeing, you know, these are teams that are mostly throwing doubles, seeing definitely a diminished technical over what you would expect in seniors, but still a lot of fun, still a lot of promise. And it was a good time watching these programs. Well, let's move on to the dance, because I feel like this was the most predictable event. I mean, we all kind of knew it was going to be Mao or Gia in the women's event. But I feel like in dance, unless there had been a complete catastrophe We all pretty much knew Leah Nassette and Artem Markalov from the U.S. were going to take it, and they did. This team has shown over and over again through this season, they are very strong. They are so connected on the ice. They skate up and out to the crowd. They understand their music. They have tons of talent. The skating skills are on fire. There's a ways to go before they're going to be in the same league as some of the top tier senior skaters, of course. And I stands, as we've talked about plenty, it takes a long time to evolve into that upper echelon skater. It's just the nature of this sport that you're going to come in and you can be on top of juniors and you're probably going to slide into the lower tier of seniors and slowly make your way up. But this team is really exciting. And honestly, if they can improve their technical abilities as they go along, they're probably going to smoke a lot of the existing competitors out there that are in kind of the mid tier of, say, the U.S. and Canada and some of the European countries because they're very, very good. They are extraordinary. And I don't like to say typically that one is better than the other, but Artem Markalov is exceptional. He is really good. But what was exciting to see is that I've noticed as we started paying attention to them, I guess maybe around the Grand Prix final, but Leah has really 
evolved more than I would have expected already. And that's not a long time. It's a few months. She was already extraordinary, but already I'm seeing growth. So it's fun to watch a young team really develop as quickly as they are. I just feel like the ceiling is going to be really high for them. I will say that a frustrating thing for us with both the ice dance competition and the men's competition is that their short programs disappeared off of YouTube before we got a chance to see them. So there's a few of these teams that we saw because individual performances had been uploaded, but I think the ISU's channel got copyright struck on the short programs on the rhythm dance. So there is a lot of stuff that we actually kind of missed out on there because we just came to it a little bit late and it was already gone. I don't think that we got a full picture for a lot of these teams. Some of them we have already seen earlier in the season. Some of them were new to me. There are teams like Peel and Peel from the U.S. that kind of stand out to me that I liked quite a lot. I wish we could kind of give a little bit more in-depth run through of more of the ice dance, but I just don't really actually feel comfortable diving too much deeper into it because of them. That's the one where I felt like I saw the least. And even though there's a lot of great teams, it didn't stick with me as much. That's totally fair. And Maybe they'll reappear on the ISU channel or we'll just find them. But until then, we can move on to the men's competition. I want to be real candid here. The men's competition was my least favorite competition of this event, mostly because it just didn't, frankly, interest me as much, which is saying something because men's, for listener reference, is always my favorite event. Always. Has been since I was a kid. But that said, Anthony Paradis is everything. And I don't care that he was 15th in the overall standings. He is, I'm already going to say it, I'm going ahead, gold in my heart. Ooh, okay. All right. So the top three here were South Korea's Minkyu Seo, who we've seen several times this season. This is a very talented skater who has a lot of technical firepower. He barely squeaked out this win. I think it's maybe a little bit more than a point over the second place competitor, which was uh, Japan's Ryo Nakata, who came back from a fifth place short program to actually winning the free skate. And like I said, just barely got beat to get that silver there. Ryo kind of amuses me. I don't know why, but he's very small, but he is very like, I am man. Like there is something like grr about like his skating and I find it very entertaining. We saw him win the Grand Prix final and he's obviously an extremely athletic skater. He does not have a lot in between the jumps going on just yet. And his program was to James Bond, which only kind of fed into that idea of grr arg man. (laughs) And I say that with love. Like I think Rio is extremely talented. I do feel like I haven't seen much more than just a lot of jumping yet, but I do appreciate that he came in fifth in the short program and then just turned it up in that free skate. And I felt like it was all like fuel to his fire of like, oh, I didn't perform well in that short and he had a bad youth Olympics. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show them why I belong on this podium. I got to say that watching Rio in the James Bond free skate, when I was like 14 that had been my favorite thing oh, of this of whole competition i would have wanted that outfit i would have wanted to <laughs> skate around to that music and feel like i was a secret super spy agent guy i felt that entirely i think in this one between rio and then the third place skater adam hagara from slovakia both of their programs that we saw because again we didn't get to see their short programs we only saw the free skate both of those were more interesting to me than minkyu CEOs. And again, no disrespect to him. I think he put on a really nice free skate. It's just not as memorable to me. The other two really stand out to me. Adam still has juniorish qualities in a junior level skater, but there's a lot of foundation to him as a skater that I think I can look and see the competitor he's going to become over time. I think there's a lot of promise there. Obviously, the other two guys also have a ton. It's also super fun to see that Adam and Ryu are friends. They talked about how like they had really met and bonded at some other like longer event earlier this year. And so we're very excited for each other on this podium. But all three of them were pretty cool. I mean, I agree. Minkyu, I feel like I've seen him other times where he struck me a little bit more and he stuck with me a little more. This program was solid. It was steady and it was enough to win him this championship, which is wonderful. But I agree. It just wasn't as necessarily interesting to me as, say, Adam Hagara's. 
I mean, Adam has been performing on the senior circuit as well. I believe he'll also be at Senior Worlds. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I, I think so. Yeah, he's just showing up as an interesting young skater to me in a bigger way so far. But again, they're all very young. This could all change. All three of them are super talented. We'll see where they lead. But I'm going back a step to what I said when we first started this. Anthony Paradis. I think if you look at the kinds of reactions that people had online to watching this competition, one of the universal ones is, oh my gosh, Anthony Paradis from Canada is an astounding talent. We saw him for really the first time at Canadian Nationals this year, and we're struck by the maturity of skate quality that he has and the complete investment in his artistic expression. This is a young man who has a load of skating skill and identity. You can see who this guy is on ice. I mean, he is projecting his entire soul into those performances. He just struggles with not having all of the jumps that he needs. Right. His triples are improving, but he still doesn't have a triple axle. And that is a big detriment because he will not successfully make the jump into seniors without it. But I think he's only 15. He's got some time. But just to see the inventiveness that he shows on ice is really astounding. Yeah. I mean, he takes my breath away. I am shocked at his age to be bringing what he does to the ice. He really blows me away. And I am so hoping I am crossing every finger and toe that he can bring up that technical content so that he can be competitive amongst the best men in the world for the next 10 years. Because I feel like skating doesn't have another person like him. He is such a unique creature. And I only found out about Anthony Parody a few months ago, and I'm already like, I need you to keep going because <laughs> you're just amazing. Even though he was 21st after the short and then 10th in the free skate, which got him to 15th overall, even at 15th, it's the most impressive performance of that entire competition and is the one that I'm going to find most memorable after the fact, other than watching Rios and thinking, man, 14-year-old me would have been totally into that. So I have a big question for you. Who's gold in your heart? Oh, God, I'm really on the fence. Because if I was really being honest about my favorite skate from the entirety of World Juniors, it would be Rina Uzono's from Japan, her free skate. I was just blown away by it. I was just I knocked think that's out. a good choice. That's a really good yeah. choice. I would hang a gold medal over Jia Shin's shoulders in a heartbeat because I really do think she is gold medal material. Like I said, I mean, with all respect to Mao Shimada's incredible capabilities and her own artistry and, and amazing jumps, my preference does lean towards Jia Shin stylistically. But even the two of them at their full power didn't really give me the joy that Rena's performance did. So, yeah, gold in my heart this time is Rena Uzono. And with that, I think we have wrapped up Junior Worlds. I hope that you guys got a chance to see it. If you did, tell us in the comments what were the skates that you reacted to, who you're most excited about, what the big surprises were for you. This made the case, particularly the women's competition, it made the case for watching juniors. Because I think in previous seasons, I would not have been particularly compelled to watch the junior level. I wasn't expecting the caliber of competition that we're seeing here. And it was some really great, exciting skates. That women's competition was absolutely incredible. And I highly recommend, if you can find it on YouTube, go back and watch it. Especially that long program live stream was so compelling. It was inspiring for the next generation of women in the sport to me. Our next episode coming up, I don't know what we're doing yet. Um, <laughs> It'll be some kind of preview of Worlds. We've got a few more weeks leading up to the World Championships, and we're trying to determine how we best summarize our feelings and our predictions and all of that good stuff leading into those. So it'll be coming, but what that means, uh, TBD. Yeah, so... As always, everything about Scoreography is available at our website, scoreography.show. The primary hub for the show is YouTube. That's the best place to get into the conversation, both with us and with your fellow listeners, to kind of discuss all things skating. All the places to follow us in the social are in the description or on the website. So if you want to get involved with us on any of those places, you can. 
But for Scoreography, I'm Adrian Buskey. And I'm Wendy Buskey. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.